Back in 2012, scientists at the University of Wyoming designed, get this, spider goats. No joke! By splicing together the genes of spiders with actual goats, they created barnyard creatures that could spin their own webs. I mean, Batman has his bad cow, let's give Spider-Man his spider goats! <laughs> Screaming goats, then fainting goats, and now spider goats? Seriously, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show whose intro starts with a topic I have yet to cover in the two years of this channel's existence, simply because I was so confident that we'd actually get to covering it. And today, we're finally gonna talk about radioactive Spider-Mans. Now, before we get into today's theory, let me just say, the new movie looks incredible. Though, of of course, I can't say for certain since, you know, I wasn't invited to the previews. Unlike literally every other movie YouTube channel out there. And also, Smosh Games, for some reason, who I love you guys, but... Mm, and, uh... I don't know, man. Mickey Mouse is just trying to grind my face into the dirt with his oversized cartoonish yellow shoe. Ha <laughs> ha! You suck, Matt! Anyway, enough about me and the chip on my shoulder about being one of the largest film channels on YouTube, but still not getting invited to events like that. Today, it is time to whip out your fury shooters, because get this! Peter Parker, your friendly neighborhood spider bro, yeah, well, he is without question totally dead. Oh, no, no, no. Not no. he's dead and symbolically making his way through the phases of grief Majora's mask kind of way. More of a, hey, have you ever really stopped to think about what the fatal ramifications of a human possessing spider powers might be? Because here's the thing. Forget Rhino and Lizard and Vulture. Spider-Man's biggest enemy is gonna be his own anatomy every time he steps out the door to do some web swinging. Now, you'll notice that in most versions of the story, Spider-Man got his powers after being bitten by a radioactive spider, which alters his DNA and gives him awesome powers like super strength proportional to that of a spider, lightning fast reflexes, climbing walls and spider sense aka literally being able to predict the future because i don't know about you but the first thing that comes to mind when i'm thinking about spiders is their reputation as nature's fortune tellers why is spider sense a thing maybe there's an actual reason for it come to think of it spider sense makes literally no sense you'll notice though that the one thing i didn't mention is his ability to shoot spider webs because that one's a bit tricky you see originally spider-man made the web shooters himself but also sometimes in the comics he did get the ability to make spider webs inside of his own body, and then the movies gave him the power just right off the bat. So long story short, it's complicated, all right? But it gets even more awkwardly complicated when you consider that the male spider's web shooter shares space with their reproductive ducts. Ugh, whispering it just makes it sound even grosser. So needless to say, we're not touching that one. This is still a family-friendly show. I am not. I'm not even going close to that one. But all joking aside, it's that man part of Spider-Man that's gonna get Peter Parker into trouble. I mean, sure, Peter's DNA may have changed with the spider bite, but he's still a human. Well, most of the time. What I'm trying to point out to you today is that no amount of radiation is suddenly gonna change the way his body's constructed, the way that blood pumps through his veins, or that he has an actual endoskeleton. And details like that, while they may seem insignificant, actually matter a lot when you're suddenly subjecting yourself to very non-human spider-like activities like web swinging. These are literally the difference makers between life and death. And Peter is definitely gonna be on the death side of that spectrum, no matter how much spider strength he might possess. For instance, spiders have what's called an open circulatory system. Yeah, that opening for the 90s cartoon was so rad and so scientifically inaccurate because spiders don't actually have blood, radioactive or otherwise. You see, a spider's open circulatory system consists of a big ol' muscle sack of a heart filled with what's known as hemolymph, basically the fancy word for bug blood. In retrospect, I guess hemolymph, hemolymph, radioactive hemolymph wouldn't have been as big of a hit with the kitties. Anyway, inside the spider's body, the heart contracts to put pressure on the hemolymph, which pushes it out to fill large sacs around all the essential organs. And that, ladies
ladies and gentlemen, is how oxygen gets to all the important parts of a spider's body. The hemolymph is kind of free to flow wherever it wants to until the heart summons it back, cleans out the wastes, and then pushes it back into the sacs again. Humans, by contrast, have a closed circulatory system, where the blood is trapped inside one continuous loop, running through arteries and veins as it flows from the lungs to the heart and around the body. It's a great system that works really well until you start having to deal with G-forces. You see, when trapped in a closed circulatory system, G-forces can actually pull blood down and away from the organs they need to go to. Places like, say, the brain, where a second or two without oxygen and whammo, you have passed out. And guess who's feeling a bunch of extra G-forces literally all the time? Good old Peter Parker, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man as he web swings his way through the city. Just how many G's? Let's talk about that. You know how when you spin a bucket of water around, the water stays in the bottom of the bucket and doesn't fall out when it's upside down? Well, that happens because of centripetal force. The force that acts on anything moving in a circular path, and that force is directed towards the center of the circle. But now, replace the bucket with Peter's body, and the water with Peter's blood. So I ran the calculations and found that every time Spider-Man swings through the city, he's experiencing, at minimum, three Gs of force as his body bottoms out of the arc of his swing sending blood rushing out of his brain and down to his feet. Spiders, when they swing on webs, don't have the same problem because of their open circulatory system. They can just contract their heart more to force the hemolymph to spread around their body more evenly. But a human? We're in trouble. It's actually a reason why fighter pilots have to wear special compression suits when they're stunt flying, so their blood can stay more evenly distributed around their bodies as they flip through the air. And call me crazy, but the last thing you want to have happen while flying around on a a thin rope of webbing hundreds of meters above the road is to black out and go careening down to slam into the ground. Not very super heroic of you there, Spider Boy. But lightheadedness is the least of Spidey's worries. I don't care how super he is, he'd constantly be rupturing his own internal organs every time he swung around on those webs. How? Well, with moments like this. You gotta do superhero landing. Wait for it! Woo! Superhero landing! Hey everyone. These sorts of landings are iconic for Spider-Man, and yet they'd also be unbelievably deadly. Take for instance this scene in Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man. Peter discovers that he has the ability to shoot webs, and on his first attempt to swing he hits a wall like Wile E. Coyote. Hilarious? More like hilariously dead. After seeing this and running some quick numbers using pixel measurements, Peter's swinging in this scene at over 17 meters per second, or almost 40 miles per hour, and he's hitting that wall with over 75,000 newtons of force. That translates to over 100 g-forces of deceleration instantaneously. Remember, Peter isn't a spider, he's a spider man. And even with enhanced super strength and reflexes, he's still just a guy. A guy who definitely just had all his internal organs slam into his ribcage because unlike a real spider who has an exoskeleton, humans have hard bones inside their bodies protecting the organs that are sloshing around inside there. And when you're swinging at 40 miles an hour and suddenly come to a dead stop, that protection becomes a dangerous roadblock as your organs want to keep up with their momentum, only to crash headlong into the rib cage, rupturing themselves in the process. But hey, if the sudden stop doesn't kill him, well, the extreme falls will. Again, spiders have evolved and adapted to their wall-climbing web-based lifestyle, and that means adapting to avoid fall damage. More specifically, spiders' bodies are built in a way that they have high surface area relative to their volume. In other words, this means that they have a large surface to act as an aerofoil and thus slow their fall, coupled with a small overall mass. They're kind of like a natural parachute. They've evolved in a way that enables them to fall from huge heights and still survive because that's what their life entails every single day. Climbing into high corners, building webs, and yeah, sometimes getting caught by a stray breeze or swiffer only to plummet to the ground. They need to be able to survive that and their bodies are built accordingly. Humans, on the other hand, are built to sit on their computers and type, and thus that means they're dense and shaped like walking, talking railroad spikes. Wide spider is wide, but narrow Spider-Man is cutting through the air like butter. The way his body is shaped isn't going to help him slow his descent at all, so surviving the punishing 600 megapascals of pressure he's placing on his body with 200 meter dead drop landings like this one is just impossible. But most importantly, remember that kite an exoskeleton that spiders have I mentioned a couple paragraphs ago? Well, they have two 
technically. The outer layer is hardened and resistant to puncture forces, and the inner layer is more stretchy and has a high tensile strength. It's able to bend and flex to do things like, you know, absorb the impact of performing landings like this one. But if you're a dense human rod with dense human rod-like bones inside of you holding everything together, those things will absolutely shatter and break when you're putting that amount of pressure on them. Spider strength or no? Let's just say that Tom Holland is gonna lose a few more inches off of his already petite stature. Long story short, spiders have evolved to the form they are today over thousands of years to perfect a body type that's adapted to all of its creepy, crawly, weird, arachnid needs. Climbing walls, falling off those walls, changing velocity quickly. Those same powers, but without the proper body structures to support those powers, is gonna just be a recipe for disaster. Our soft and squishy, not parachute like closed circulatory dense bodies just aren't equipped to handle it. Spider bite or no? Moral of the story is that web swinging is not something humans should be doing unless supervised by an adult in a giant flying robot exoskeleton. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut.